Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I wanna welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix, the last one probably before the end of the year. What a year we had, 2017. Came in blazing and has gone out um, in, in burning glory. Hope you had a wonderful year. Uh, if you're watching this video, then perhaps you are dealing with an adrenal fatigue nightmare. And I like to think of this adrenal fix session as a way for you to recover from your adrenal fatigue nightmare. So let's talk, you guys voted, and we had a vote on um, adrenal fatigue and weight gain. And so um, let's talk about some sacred cows. I think that's really important. Um, you go to the doctor and you go get blood tests done and you're told that your blood tests are normal and that nothing's wrong with you. How frustrating is that? Then you do your own research, which by the way, I know what you're doing. You're spending hours upon hours on the internet, um, forms like this, Facebook forms, other types of Facebook groups or pages, um, researching uh, all you can about your, your illness or your fatigue and, and you learn that there is this thing called adrenal fatigue. So you go and lo and behold, you go back to your doctor and you tell them, hey, I think I got this adrenal fatigue problem. And they look at you like you have three heads, not two heads. And so between going to the doctor, not feeling good, crashing in the middle of the day, being exhausted, having brain fog, not being able to focus, not handling your stressors very well, uh, waking up in the middle of the night, not falling asleep, um, having anxiety and heart races, standing up and get lightheaded, and not being able to um, focus or concentrate, and most importantly, um, or if all of those aren't important, not losing any weight, going to the gym and exercising, and maybe you've overdone it and you've done a lot of overtraining, and your cycle is not working very well, or for guys, um, hormones aren't being balanced, and your libido's down for both of you guys and gals, and then you're not able to lose weight. And the most frustrating thing about that is you're told that there's nothing wrong with you. Or the doctor will tell you it's just a matter of eating less and exercising more and, and not being so stressed. And how frustrating is that? And when you're told there's nothing wrong with you and the sacred cow of uh, calories in equals calories out is, is so prehistoric nowadays. And so what does it have to do with adrenals? What does it have to do with being stressed out? What does it have to do with um, not having energy to handle the entire day or, or not handling um, stressors from, from day to day? So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about was inflammation. I mean, at the end of the day, behind it all, typically is going to be an inflammatory response. And so the frustrating thing is, is that you're going to the doctor, you're being told that there's nothing wrong, you're being told that there's no such as a thing as adrenal fatigue, um, you get pushed from one doctor to the next, hey, your family doctor tells you to go see the endocrinologist, the endocrinologist tells you that you're, you're crazy, um, or go see a gastro, or go see a, rheumato a rheumatologist, or go to the neurologist, and at the end of the day, you're basically spending lots of money for lots of different testing, uh, maybe even getting on a bunch of different medications like Synthroid or, or, or Cytomel or um, Armor or some kind of compounded uh, formula or even being put on prednisone or being put on antibiotics because they found that there's an infection or being put on um, antidepressives. Um, if, if that makes sense to you and you're like, oh my goodness, so far everything you've said reply, uh, applies to me, then just type in the box, yeah, that's me, I, I totally get that, or, or, or give me a, a thumbs up or a like or a share or um, something like that so that I know that you're out there. Um, but either way, <clears throat> that's the problem that I'm finding is that um, there's just these these old ways of looking at things, being told that your blood tests are normal and, and really being told to stop being so lazy and stop you know, being in front of the fridge and eating all the, all the food in sight and low, they have no idea how much you actually are not eating and they have no idea how much you're actually doing healthy things and making healthy choices and potentially getting off of gluten and dairy and going gluten free and going to the restaurant and you know eating um, you know the salad or the healthy choice 
and and not eating the bread when it comes out and 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 going to the gym and nothing's budging you can't lose the weight um, again you know put up your hands if that's what's happening because I know it's what's happening and it's really really frustrating but at the end of the day you can expect that these five things and plus probably another 10 things are going on which aren't allowing you to get um, to lose the weight and we're gonna talk exactly about that number one is inflammation and at the end of the day you have inflammation in your body um, and how do I know this because you live in a toxic world. You live in a world that has um, pesticides all over the foods. You live in a world where there's estrogen disruptors and there's nanoparticles and there's moldy foods and there's antibiotics on our, um, on our meats. And a lot of the meats have a lot of bacteria overgrowth in it and the foods GMO'd and it's not even real. Um, it's, it's sprayed, it has chemicals, it has preservatives. The supplements that you're taking, they have chemicals and preservatives and toxic tagalongs and excipients and flowing agents. And at the end of the day, it creates inflammation in your body. Now, the frustrating thing is you'll go to the doctor and they'll say, well, your C-reactive protein is low, you have no inflammation. How many of you have had that happen? Or you have um, no other signs of inflammation, your SED rate is low, your C-reactive protein is low, and I wanna tell you that there's so many other inflammatory markers besides that that they're not testing. I mean, homocysteine is a marker of inflammation, and usually low or high, I think that that's a, that's a marker of inflammation. So it's above um, nine or it's below seven, there's gonna be some inflammation there. Or if your uric acid is high, or your insulin levels are high, or your white blood levels are, white blood cell levels are higher than um, eight when the lab ranges are 10, or if they're lower than five when the lab ranges are um, uh, 3.2, those are gonna be low, low grade signs of inflammation. If your neutrophils are higher than 60%, where on the lab ranges it's not even marked off, if your eosinophils are higher than 3%, if your neutrophils are, sorry, your lymphocytes are higher than 40% or lower than 25%, those are all signs of inflammation. Um, complementary systems, your CD8 to CD4 ratios, if those are off, um, you know, rheumatoid factors, if those are high or positive, any antibodies, Hashimoto's, if those levels are, are positive, those are all signs of inflammation. Um, so there's a lot of signs of inflammation and people aren't even telling you about that. Um, but what I really especially like you guys to do is to take your markers, take your, take your pH levels in the morning and you should be anywhere between um, uh, 6.6 .6 to 7.0 and you should take this everywhere you go and, and, and pee on it whenever you pee and take your markers throughout the day. So if you took it in the morning and you were five and then you take it again and you're six and then you take it and you're 5.5 and then you take it again. So you're gonna average it over the course of the day so that you know what your pH levels are at and, and that's gonna show you have inflammation. At the end of the day, there's low-grade inflammation, and that creates neurodegenerative changes, that creates oxidized cells, that puts pressure on your digestive system, it impacts your hormones, it impacts all of these things. And so um, what it ultimately occurs is cell danger. So you've probably never heard that, or you may have heard it from me, but when your inflammation is so rampant that your body is unable to keep up with the ratio of the fire creation versus the water production to put out the fires or the free radicals compared to the antioxidants, your mitochondria are overwhelmed. And when they're overwhelmed, they say, hey, we can't handle this, we gotta shut down systems. And ultimately when it shuts down systems, it shuts down these HPA, HPT, and HPO axes. So or is it axi? Is that plural for axes? I'm not sure. So anyways, um, but the HPA, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenals, the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the ovaries or the gonads, 
that's an axis that communicate with each other. And when we have all of this inflammation and cell danger responses, your brain senses, okay, pituitary, you gotta go help uh, tell the adrenals to make cortisol or aldosterone or other types of adrenalines and stuff like that. Or, hey, okay, pituitary, go tell the thyroid that it has to make thyroid hormone for, for our hormones to work. Or, okay, pituitary, make estrogen and make progesterone and make testosterone and, and do all these things to help, to help us out. And as a result, the pituitary gets tired and we start to see secondary problems, meaning um, your, your hormones, the actual gland may be working fine, but the pituitary is tired and it's not doing a good job. And that causes hormone imbalances. But then you go for a blood test or you do a cortisol level testing or you do a, um, uh, a ACTH test and you're told they're all normal. They're all within normal ranges because those normal ranges are so broad that so it's like fighting a beast because how do you get your point across to the doctors that you're suffering here when at every turn you turn you're told that you're eating too much you're told that you need to exercise you're told that there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue you're told that even gluten sensitivity is is overrated um, you're told that um, MTHFR doesn't matter you just need to go on methylfolate um, you're told that you need to, you know, either um, burn out your adrenal gland or your thyroid with a um, with some kind of radioactive iodine, and then we can just put you on. Um, we can just put you on uh, Synthroid or Armor for the rest of your life. Or you're told that hey, you have some female issues. Um, there's polycystic. There's endometriosis. There is um, menstrual problems. So let's just take your, your plumbing and, and we can either do that or we can chemi chemically um, menstruate you or castrate you uh, if you're a guy and we'll just put you on, on medication for the rest of your life and, and that's, the way, that's all we're gonna do about it. Um, and, and to me, that's ridiculous because um, there's, there's breakdowns in the systems of the body and, and, and ultimately you can fix it. You really can. So, so, so far we have um, low-grade inflammation that's smoldering and constantly causing your cells to be bombarded with free radicals that ultimately can't be balanced with antioxidant production that creates a lot of neurotoxicity. It overstimulates your cell. You're in sympathetic mode all the time. You have, you know, escape where you can't calm down, you can't rest, you don't feel happy, you don't feel pleasurable, you continue to have to have carbs to make you feel at least a little bit energetic, um, and you just never feel satiated because now you become insulin resistant and the cell membranes aren't listening to anything that your hormones are telling you to do. Your thyroid is, is not able to bind to any receptors, Estrogen is not able to bind to any receptors. There's a lot of xenoestrogens in the society from the pesticides to the plastics to all of the chemicals we put everywhere. And as a result, um, there's very little spaces for these things to bind to our cell membrane and our hormones and our neurotransmitters, our vitamins, our minerals are not able to constray the message or convey the message that we need for the cells to work. And as a result, we're not able to put on weight, or not able to take off weight. And, and so it's really, really frustrating. So one of the things I wanted to talk about though was the cellular hypothyroidism. And I've done a, um, a Facebook Live on this before, and it's different than um, glandular cellular, uh, glandular hypothyroidism. So um, what, what I'd like you to do is look at your T3 numbers and divide it by your reverse T3. And it, your total T3 divided by your reverse T3. And if that number is not higher than 10, or if your free T3 divided by your reverse T3 is not higher than 0.2, then you have a, um, a, a cellular hypothyroid problem. So what does that mean? It means that reverse T3 numbers are gonna be high when your body um, is under a lot of stress. And your body will say, hey, let's sort of block the action of the thyroid because it burns a lot of our fuel, a lot of our gas. And so if we sort of put a, a um, sort of a, a, a stick underneath the, the accelerator, it's not going to be able to be pushed down. And if it's not going to be able to be pushed down as a result, um, then you're going to have... Um, 
you know, the inability to, to, um, to get the engine working. And that's bad in the sense that the car's not going to go anywhere, but it's good in the sense that it's not going to burn your gas. That's cellular hypo hypothyroidism. And, and a lot of you have it, and doctors don't even look at it in terms of figuring out if your thyroid's working. They just look at TSH, and it's a 50-year-old model, and if your TSH levels are high, they'll give you Synthroid. And, you're, and, and, and most of the time, I see that your TSH levels, because you're taking so much, it's like 0 .0001, 0 .0 .0 0 .0, and it's way too much. And they're not looking at those markers, let alone are they even looking at antibodies. And if they're not looking at antibodies, then they're not even seeing an immune problem. If there's an immune problem, there's going to be inflammation. If there's inflammation, there's cell danger. If there's cell danger, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, your, all your endocrine systems are not working properly, you're going to have hormonal imbalances. So what are some of those hormonal imbalances going to look like? They're going to have estrogen levels be super, super high and potentially progesterone levels be super, super low. And so now we have estrogen dominance and, and that's going to be made worse by all of the xenoestrogens in the society. So one of the things I can tell you though, just as an aside, xenoestrogens, they could really be helped with um, modified citrus pectin. That could be really, really helpful. Um, other things that could help it is sea vegetables like kelp, and, and, but it has to make sure it's really organic stuff, um, so that really helps with um, relieving and clogging, declogging these estrogen receptors. So that could be super healthy as well. The next thing I would say is one of the reasons why you are not losing weight is pure and simply your liver. Your liver is congested. Your liver is overworked. Um, liver needs good mineral balance for it to be able to work. And when our food is so crappy, our food is um, oiled, bad oils, I mean rancid oils. I could do a whole Facebook Live on bad oils. So you're looking at vegetable oils, you're looking at canola oils, you're looking at any oils that are in a light containing jar um, where it's being exposed to light and by the time you already get it, it's rancid. And you know, the sad thing is we go to Whole Foods and we think we're eating healthy, but then you go look and see what, how everything is made and it's made with vegetable oils. And you know, vegetable oils are, are really awful things. They, they put deodorizers in there so it doesn't stink to all get out. And, and they say, hey, let's not use this when for its original intended use, which was to shine wood. Um, and let's just use this for a cheap um, mass produced um, oil that we can heat at high temperatures and cause it to smoke and, and really be rancid and burn your, your foods um, when you cook with it at high temperatures. Um, and let's just put it in, in you know, foods and um, save a lot of money and, and really create um, oxidization of your cells. And that's going to cause issues with your liver. Huge, huge problem. So oils are really, really important. In fact, I think it's really important that, especially women, they get um, proper um, essential fatty acids, um, whether it's a marine oil um, or a really good high quality oil, about um, a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon once to twice a day. You should really be thinking about that. Um, but the other things that cause liver problems is um, mass um, overconsumption of, of sugary foods. I mean, you look at a big gulp and a big gulp has enough sugar in there for three elephants. I mean, it really does. And as a result, um, what's going to happen is it's going to burn off your reserves of B vitamins. And when that happens, liver is not going to have the capacity to conjugate, bring all the things together, and then sort them out and make it fat-soluble to water-soluble, and then water-soluble to eliminating through the body. So phase one, phase two, and conjugation goes down, and liver basically slows down to more than 50% because we're over-consuming sugary foods. Um, but yet I had a call today with someone with her daughter who is having seizures and we talked about perhaps, you know, going back to the 1920s, how um, ketogenic diets could have really great applications. Um, but the nurse just said, no, she can't do it because she's already overweight and we're concerned that her cholesterol levels will go up. And it's just like, phew, like 
the whole reason that she has insulin resistance in the first place is because she's not eating any healthy fats and she's eating way too many carbs and she's insulin resistant and she has all these lipid peroxidations because of crappy junk oils. Um, she's eating healthy, like loads and loads of sugary foods and she's got fatty liver. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't think you have inflammatory low-grade reactions, you got fatty liver and you probably also got cellular hypothyroidism and your adrenals are exhausted and they're not working well. But yet there's nothing wrong with you. Yet your blood tests are normal and you just need to stop opening and closing the fridge and eating bonbons and cupcakes. I mean, it just makes me so mad. Um, so the other things that we see with liver problems is just the foods. I mean, not only are they highly processed, they're highly, you know, cooked in oils, not only at, you know, junky oils, um, but they're fried and they're cooked like at ridiculous temperatures. So there's no digestive enzymes in there and you burn through your reserves to be able to break down those foods and they sit there and they ferment and they create um, even more um, lactic acid. And then what do we do? We put you on an antacid and then you deplete your nutrients even further because antacids have, you know, FDA warnings that, that they deplete you of magnesium. And then you'll start to take magnesium. But well, well, why did you have low stomach acid in the first place? Because you're eating crappy foods and there's junk oils and you're heating them too high and you're not supporting it through healthy digestive enzymes, fermented foods, kefirs, healthy fats. Um, I mean, it just, it just the circle goes round and round and round and round. Um, uh, other things that are going to cause problems with the, um, the liver, again, is pesticides and sprays, um, immunizations. Immunizations are really high with mycotoxins and antibiotics are not going to get rid of mycotoxins. You're going to need to do binders like clays and charcoal and uh, earth and stuff like that to get all that stuff out of you. Yet there's nothing wrong with you and don't even get me started. Um, the last, so other liver things are going to be high, high um, fructose corn syrup. I mean, that just doesn't even get processed by, um, by our immune system. And it just basically goes straight to the liver and it causes fatty liver. And, and that's going to create huge problems. And also these aspartames and these, these fake sugars that create neurotoxicity, that create inflammation, that fatigue your cell membranes and your energy levels, and you're not able to lose weight because you're under, you're under siege. You're on the defensive. Your pH is very, very low, yet you don't have any inflammation. And there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. Um, and then the standard American diet, I mean, you know, the, the soils nowadays are so depleted of, of minerals that we don't get good quality foods. And when you think you're eating healthy, you're really not. Um, you're potentially getting foods that are highly heated um, in, in junk oils um, and they don't have really good quality foods. They're sprayed with chemicals like grapes. Um, are probably the most sprayed um, fruit in all of the U.S. Um, and even U.S. wines would have a lot of insecticides and pesticides and sprays, cherries, strawberries, and even when they're um, organic, they potentially are washed with, with waters that have pesticides in them. And I hate to feel like the sky's falling, um, but you have to be really aware of that. Um, also, you have to be aware of the fact that a lot of the proteins that you eat, they have a lot of bacteria in there and they have hormones and antibiotics and they're grass, they're not, they're corn fed and that corn fed, like if you look at two pieces of meat beside each other, um, you'll see um, an animal that had fatty liver themselves. And when you cook it, it tastes nicer, it tastes yummier in terms of it's, it's more tasty because there's more fat in there. Because they had fatty liver, they were fed with corn that you know was probably moldy and, and had mycotoxins and mold and fungus. I mean, I, I hate to like, you know, be the bearer of, of, of realistic information, but you have to really be vigilant about your food. You really do. And I think, you know, instead of taking 26 different supplements, be more aware of the food that you're eating every day and, and, and the quality of the food that you're getting and take the time to prepare it where you're not heating it so high and you know the old crock pot method or even just um, you know raw um, fermented um, foods um, and, and, and really you know use digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid to support your digestive system with every meal.
with every meal. Um, so I kind of rifled through that. Um, with weight gain, it's just really frustrating because it's not calories in equals calories out. It's really a, a systematic breakdown of your cell membranes, of your, um, of your ability to absorb nutrients, of your ability to hold a nice pH balance, of having a environment that is rampant with um, pesticides and chemicals and, uh, and bacterias and molds and pathogens that cause your adrenals to be fatigued with having to settle down inflammation, breaks down other hormone imbalances, causes cellular hypothyroidism so your system's not able to metabolize and break down things, causes your liver to be um, congested and not being able to, and we're not meant to be having toxic livers. I mean, we're meant to have bile to be nicely made and to help remove toxins from the liver and from the bile and be eliminated through the feces or through the urine. But when we're not able to congest and, 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 and make the bile flow, it starts to back up and it backs up and it causes um, a buildup of reabsorption of toxins. And now we have bile flow in the blood and now that will go into the genital urethral system. So now we could have um, uh, bladder infections or vaginal infections or even um, liver flukes. I mean, it's just, it, it's really, really sad. So anyways, um, those are most of the reasons I'm finding you're not able to lose weight because your, your, your hormones, your whole body is breaking down. And if you wanna call it adrenal fatigue or cell danger or cellular hypothyroidism or immune dysregulation or low-grade inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, it's all of the above. And so how is going on Armour, Synthroid, Cytomel, um, you know, um, having your thyroid being taken out, having your gallbladder be taken out, having your entire female reproductive system being taken out. How is that going to fix that? It's not. It really isn't. It's really, really frustrating. And it can be fixed. It really can. And it has to do a lot with you doing the right things. So um, we do consults all the time. And, and really, I'm all about changing your life and helping you lose the weight that, that you can lose. And I really believe that it's possible. And so um, I will put a link to um, my 45 minute consults. But again, like I said, you have to be serious about changing this. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna take hard work. You're gonna be decisive. You gotta be committed. And the only way you lose is, is you quit. And, and, and you gotta get resourceful because I know a lot of you guys have already spent a lot of money on this and you're only frustrated to find out that you still can't sleep, you're still not losing weight, you're still told that your blood tests are normal, you're still told that it's all in your head and it's a matter of just, just stop eating so much and just start exercising a little bit more. Anyways, um, let me go through these answers, these questions that you guys have here so that I can answer them. Um, so Diane, I have hashies and suffer inflammation all through my body, even high pressure in my eyes for years now. Yeah, I mean, it will back up and, you know, typically um, there's histamine reactions too, and that does happen to relate to your methylation components, your absorption issues, um, and they're all somehow related to each other, and that will create allergies and itchy and redness and swelling and um, and problems and uh, the fact that you have Hashimoto's your immune system is predisposed from a genetic predisposition meet, meeting the environmental triggers creating that perfect storm is TGF beta one a marker of inflammation yes it is thank you for your in the information you're welcome Julie um, do you recommend using lard depends where you get it from um, you know I would want to make sure I know the source um, if it's a grass-fed thing, it's hormone-free, um, it's, 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 it's packaged and, and made properly, it isn't left out and it doesn't have high bacteria in it, um, then perhaps. Um, but if you're not controlling your glucose and you're not aware of how many carbs you're eating in a day, then potentially, yeah, your glucose levels, your cholesterol levels are going to start to rise, your insulin levels are going to rise, you're going to gain more weight because you're not necessarily going um, high-fat, low-carb diet 
diet, you're going high fat, high, high carb diet and or high fat, high protein, low carb diet. And that can create a lot more cholesterol raising levels because you truly aren't doing it properly. MCT oils are awesome, uh, Diane. So um, again, but you got to be careful that you don't take too much in because already um, in one serving, your bile is not probably doing well. Your gallbladder is not doing well. You're not absorbing a lot of that healthy fat and you'll be running to the bathroom to to have you know an upset stomach because you just overloaded it and and, and you're probably um, doing more more harm than good um, Robin broccoli and strawberry highest sprayed in the Australia yeah I mean I don't know about broccoli but I know the strawberries um, the cherries the the grapes those are the ones that are sprayed the most here and I didn't know that about Australia um, we actually the other day got a New Zealand wine um, because I figured they didn't use as much sprays there as they do here in the US um, but I know it's not, you're not New Zealand or New Zealand and Australia are the same thing, right? Man. Anyways, I know you say that to a, a, a New Zealander and they get really upset. So, um, but you're Australia. So anyways, um, what is your thoughts on the keto diet with adrenal fatigue? Would it be too taxing? Again, it really depends, Allison. I got to do a, a whole lecture on that. I can't really answer that in a, in a one second, five second sound bite because there's so much that goes into that for sure. Um, Diane joint pain okay so um anyways um that's really all i got i wanted to do a, a facebook live for you guys i'm going to be doing them probably three times a week now um because my goal is really to help you guys get better it really is whether you become a patient of mine or not um, my goal is to help you um, get better and end the nightmare and realize it's not in your head um, i do have access to um, New Zealand wines are beautiful, but Australian has great, um, good, clean, and I can't see the rest of it. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, I, I figured they were both, they would both be good. Um, but, um, so the other thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing with you, um, how to get access to some of these products. Um, I, I used to send people to Amazon, um, and I didn't care, but now, um, I have a doctor supplement store, um, that, you know, depending on if I do a Facebook live like this, um, you can get, um, a really good, you know, discount for the first three days that I do this. I didn't do it for this one, um, because I wasn't really trying to make any recommendations for any specific products. Um, but there are really great products and, um, and, and so once you register, you can register by, um, you know, we have a, uh, a flyer that you can it's like going to Amazon and having if you've never registered for Amazon you have to obviously register as a user and then once you register as a user there'll be a link to um, a kit that I put together and this one may be called the adrenal fatigue and weight loss kit and so it would have probably like the pH strips um, I would probably put um, a premier uh, hydrochloric acid for using to be able to um, break down well wow. It's like I'm dyslexic um, to be able to break down your your healthy um, protein that you're eating. I'm in love. I really am. I'm in love with this product right here. It's called B Max ND, and most people take synthetic bees. And when you take synthetic bees, believe it or not, I'll tell you a little secret. They're coal tar derivatives. So um, like coal tar, and 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 you're getting these derivatives that. Um, they may be good and, and I did I just listened to a webinar this morning and when your body gets exposed to a known toxicant or a chemotoxin or a, um, a neurotoxin and it like gasoline or kerosene it it knows like bad 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 but when it is a wolf in sheep's clothing like it's like say it's a B, B vitamin synthetic and it has these toxic tagalines like stearic acid or magnesium steric or even gelatin capsules that are made from hoofs and, and nastiness. Um, those may be good in the beginning because your cell is like sucking it in like, ah, oh, I need this. But then after a while, it's like slowly killing it because it's toxic. And what's really sad is the FDA knows about this and they know that excipients are really, really bad. And they know that these excipients, um, when they're in, um, in, in medications and, and pharmaceuticals, that they're only meant for short term use. But because it's not regulating supplements and foods, it doesn't really say anything about them. And, you know, and I, I hate to 
you know, get too political. Um, but if they if they were doing their job, the rates at which insecticides and 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 um, and, and sprays um, and chemicals were put on these vegetations at the levels that they're at, um, if they were really doing their job, they wouldn't be allowed to sell those things because they really are toxic to your liver and toxic to your cells and toxic to your ability to lose weight. Um, so I do believe they ship to Australia, but you'd have to, um, you'd have to go to their checkout and usually their checkout um, would show you like which, which zip codes or which country codes they would ship to Robin. So hopefully that would really help you out and, and answer that question. Um, but yeah, that's my favorite one right now. It's called B Max ND and I just sort of put it in my water and I drink that, you know, and like I said, you know, one of your new year's resolutions should be to drink more water. I mean, it should be drink. I, I talked to a good buddy, a uh, patient of mine today, I really enjoy him. And, uh, and he's a big fella and he weighs uh, over 200 pounds and he guessed that he was drinking about 24 ounces of water per day. That's about 80 ounces less than he needs to be drinking. And he's working hard and he's sweating and he's perspiring and he is losing a lot of his electro electrolytes and minerals and he was low on his chloride. And chloride is salt and but then I get concerned because I may have high blood pressure and I was told not to eat salt but wait a minute we're talking about rock iron salt we're talking about iodized salt we're talking about salt that's heated to all crazy temperatures and, and dried over nickel and contaminated uh, we're not talking about air-dried pink salt that you need to replenish in half the ounces of but you know your ounce half the half your body weight in ounces that you're nowhere near close to and, and that places a huge stress on the adrenals. Any coffee or green tea on top of that is gonna severely deplete you even further and, and you're wondering why your blood tests are normal and you're told there's nothing wrong with you and there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. So anyways, um, hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of that. Um, I look forward to changing your life. I look forward to ending the nightmare and I look forward to you being at a healthy weight and, and really my mission is to transform your life and get you doing the things that you love to be doing again. So I wish you guys a wonderful, wonderful new year. Be safe and healthy and happy and we'll talk to you probably next year. So that's all for now and, and take care, okay? Hope you enjoyed it.